On this worksheet, we're going to be practicing a few different things. We're going to practice counting the number of carbon and hydrogen atoms in a molecule, identifying functional groups that are in the molecule, and then also making a prediction about whether or not the molecule would be soluble in water. Let's start with counting the number of ca carbon atoms, just the carbon atoms, for this first molecule right here. Looks like some kind of vitamin. Uh, and I'm going to just be putting dots in the places where all the carbon atoms are located. So if you remember, we have a carbon atom at the ending of every single one of these lines. These lines that we're looking at represent the carbon-carbon bonds. So there's a carbon atom on either end of every single one of these little line segments. There's a carbon atom everywhere. The line takes a little bit of an angle like all of these, and carbon atoms at the ending of all of these lines. Again, every one of these lines is representing a carbon-carbon bond. So all of these dots that I'm drawing here are representing carbon atoms. Now, this spot over here, this particular line over here, this is one that confuses students quite a bit. This line that we're looking at right here is the bond between this carbon atom and this oxygen atom right here. Remember, oxygen atoms are not things that are left out of line structures they're showing, and also the carbon-oxygen bond is not going to be left out of a line structure as well. So there can't be a carbon atom right here in this position. If there was a carbon atom in this position, then that would mean that we weren't drawing the bond between this carbon atom here and the oxygen atom. And that's not one of the things that we're allowed to leave out of a line structure. Structure. So this bond that we're looking at, again, this is the bond from carbon to oxygen, and there is no carbon atom at the end of this line. This is the carbon-oxygen bond. So the, all of these dots that I drew, those are all of our carbon atoms. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm just going to start writing the molecular formula, and I'll write C20. We'll finish this with the hydrogens as well. Eventually, we'll come to it. Let's practice just counting carbons again with the next molecule. Right here, we're going to count carbons again. Remember, every one of these lines that we're looking at, these lines all represent carbon-carbon bonds. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 carbon atoms. And as a reminder, again, these lines are showing us this is a double bond right here, double bond between this carbon and the oxygen atom. And this that we're looking at here, this is the bond from the carbon to the other oxygen atom. So there isn't a carbon at the end of these lines. These are the bonds to the oxygen atoms. Let's, um, let's practice this one too. This one's got like a the formatting here has made this bond kind of shrink. So let's practice this one. Um, this one has got like a mixture of line notation and condensed notation, which we see occasionally. So when we're counting carbon atoms, we don't want to leave these guys out. We have one right here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 carbon atoms. All right, let's, we have two more, but we'll finish those ones later. Let's look at um, the next part of this first thing, count the number of hydrogen atoms. This one's a little bit more tedious. When we're counting the number of hydrogen atoms, some of the hydrogen atoms are going to be shown to us. Some of the hydrogen atoms are going to be invisible. And the way that we're going to find the invisible hydrogen atoms is by remembering that carbon atom, all carbon atoms want four bonds. This could be for single bonds to a carbon atom, or it could be a double bond with two single bonds, or maybe it's a triple bond with one single bond, or it could be two double bonds, whatever. There needs to be four lines, four bonds on every single carbon atom. So when we're looking at a line structure and we see a carbon atom um, that does not have four lines attached to it, that means that we have some hydrogen atoms that are hiding from us in the molecule. So for example, when we look at this carbon right here, we can only see one of its bonds. We know that it has to have four bonds. We just can't see three of those four bonds. Those bonds that we can't see are the bonds to hydrogen atoms. 
So this is the same kind of deal in all of these carbon atoms that are, you know, just have one visible bond, they all have three hydrogen atoms on them. All of them. So let's take a look at, like, here's our next carbon atom in the molecule. This carbon atom, we can see one, two, three, four of its bonds. We can see all of its bonds, which means it has zero hydrogens attached. This carbon atom, we can see two of its bonds. So that means that it has two hydrogen atoms that we can't see. And that's going to be true for all of the carbon atoms that have two visible bonds. This carbon atom has one, two, three, four bonds that we can see. So that means it does not have any invisible bonds. This carbon atom has one, two, three bonds that we can see. So there's number four. The guy next to it also has three visible bonds. So it's got one hydrogen atom. And then the next couple, same situation. Down here to the end, same situation. Oh, I skipped this one, same situation. This carbon atom has two bonds that we can see. So that means it has two more hydrogens. And then don't forget about this guy out here. How many is that in total? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 30 hydrogen atoms. And there's an oxygen as well. It didn't ask me to write the molecular formula, but I'm just doing it anyways. So assuming that I didn't miss any, that one has 30 hydrogens. Let's look at this guy over here. Thankfully, it's a smaller molecule. All of the carbon atoms that have less, anything less than four bonds, that means it has hydrogen atoms attached. So we'll start right here. This carbon atom, we can see one of its bonds. So that means it has three hydrogens that we can't see. Same with this guy down here. The carbon atom that's kind of in the middle of those two, it has one, two, three bonds that we can see. So there's bond number four. The next guy over has two that we can see. There's number three, number four. This carbon atom, we can see one, two, three, four of its bonds. That means it has zero hydrogen atoms. This one, we can see one, two, three of its bonds. So here's bond number four. And same with the guy next to it. And same down here and same down here. This carbon atom, we can see one, two, three, four bonds. This carbon atom, we can only see three of its bonds, so it's got one more to hydrogen. Up here, there's three hydrogen. This carbon, we can see one, two, three, four bonds. And don't forget about this hydrogen out here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 hydrogen and a couple of oxygen as well. And then let's practice the third molecule that we were working on. How many hydrogen atoms do we have in this molecule? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18. C17H18. We also have three fluorines, an oxygen, and a nitrogen. Uh, so now let's practice our last two, finding the carbon atoms and finding the hydrogen atoms. Now that we've done this a few times, oh, we're looking at something that looks a little different here in this molecule. So we've got this triangle looking thing. If you've never seen that before, this is a single bond. And this triangle notation is trying to communicate that this bond is sticking up out of the plane of the paper, it's pointing towards you. You don't need to interpret it as anything other than it's just a regular single bond. This dashed notation, this is also representing a single bond. And this dash is just being used to indicate that the bond is like sticking down into the paper. So both of these, we can just think of them as regular single bonds. Let's count our carbon atoms first. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. C21. 21. 21. Now let's count our hydrogens. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. H, 30. And then we also have a couple of oxygen in this molecule. These little dashes that I've drawn here, these are just ways for me to count hydrogen atoms and kind of keep track of which ones I've counted and which ones I have not counted. You have to be really careful when you're using these little sticky outy notations um, because you don't want anybody to accidentally interpret those as bonds, like, you know, sticking out as a bond. So you just want to be really careful with that, you know, using them when you're working on homework problems and things like that, but not using them as, you know, ways of submitting answers to homework or tests or anything like that. Let's practice. We have one more that we can practice counting carbons and hydrogens. First, the carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, C, nine. And now our hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. H11. I think I got them all. This carbon atom right here, we can see one, two, three of its bonds. So there's one sneaky hydrogen right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, this molecule also has a nitrogen and four oxygen atoms. All right, so the next question on this worksheet is asking us to identify the functional groups that are in each one of these molecules. And to make this a little bit easier to look at, I'm going to erase all the marks that I made for counting the carbons and the hydrogens. For the first molecule, I can only see two functional groups. We have the alcohol functional group right here. I'm going to label that. And then we also have the alkene functional group multiple times. So in multiple places, we have carbon-carbon double bond multiple alkene functional groups. For our next molecule, uh, we have this functional group right here. So all of these atoms together, that's four atoms together. This is the carboxylic acid functional group. And then we also have, when we have double bonds that are um, inside a six-membered ring like this, alternating double single bonds, this is called the aromatic functional group or sometimes called the aryl functional group. And uh, this molecule down here, we have a few functional groups. We have uh, nitrogen, which means we have an amine. We've got that aromatic functional group twice. We have an oxygen atom that is in between carbon atoms. So that is an ether. And then we also have halogens, those fluorine atoms. So this one's got quite a few. Over here with this molecule, we have an alcohol, an OH. We have an oxygen atom that is in between a couple of carbons, which is another example of the ether. We have the six-membered ring with those alternating double single bonds, the aromatic. And then we also have the carbon-carbon single bond. If it's just one, then it's an alkene. So sometimes it's confusing. When do we call it alkene? When do we call it aromatic? We only call it aromatic when it's in this particular pattern, a six-membered ring alternating double single around the ring. 
Last but not least, down here, we have a couple of alcohols. We have the aromatic again. That's very common, functional group. There's a nitrogen, so there's another amine. And then we have, again, the carboxylic acid. Now, the last question on this worksheet asked us to make some predictions about the, the water solubility of each one of these molecules. There's a lot of different rules that are used to make these water solubility predictions. The rule that's used in our textbook is uh, if we have six carbon atoms, six carbon atoms is kind of the cutoff, six carbon atoms per oxygen or nitrogen. And so for every one oxygen atom that we have, if we have six or fewer carbon atoms, then the molecule is going to be soluble in water. If we have more than six, that means it's not going to be soluble in water. So um, let's see a better way that I can write this. So for every for every oxygen or nitrogen atom. If we have six or more carbon atoms, that means that it is going to be not water soluble. Uh, and again, the six is like a really kind of squishy number. Other books use eight. Uh, I've seen seven. Six um, could be, uh, I've also seen six or more means not soluble in water. Six or less means soluble in water, so even the six is kind of a gray area. Hopefully none of these will be sitting right on the number six. So we have, in this molecule, we have one oxygen atom, and we have way more than six carbon atoms. So this molecule is not water-soluble. Over here, we have two oxygen atoms. Um, for every one oxygen atom, we could get away with six, so six carbons. So with two oxygen atoms, we could get away with 12 carbons, but we have more than that. So that means that this is also not water soluble. Too many carbon atoms. Um, down here, we have one oxygen and one nitrogen. So each oxygen would allow six carbons to be soluble. Each nitrogen would allow six carbons to be soluble. That would give us 12, but we have way more than 12 carbons. We have 17, so this one is also not soluble in water. Uh, over here, we have two oxygen atoms and 21 carbons. That's way more than a 6 to 1 ratio, so this one is also not soluble in water. This molecule, um, definitely not soluble in water. Last one down here, we have one nitrogen and four oxygen atoms. The nitrogen could bring six carbons in and those four oxygen atoms each could bring six carbon in. So that's be a total of 30 carbon atoms. So that's way more than what we have. So finally, we have one that is soluble in water.